Now getting into some season previews. First, starting off with my Boston Celtics. Uh, for my starting lineup, I have Kemba Walker, Marcus Smart, Jason... Uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Daniel Tice. Basically the same starting lineup, except you're putting in uh, Mark Smart and then you're moving Jalen uh, Brown down to that three. I think that's going to be an excellent lineup. Uh, you got, you got honestly four very good defenders, though Daniel Tice can be outmatched uh, with uh, size sometimes he is at the end of the day still a very solid defender who's super smart on that side of the ball good shot blocker uh, and then that wing defense of Marcus Smart Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum is going to make some teams struggle those are all uh, three guys who can be uh, all the de all defense type of guys at certain points and then you have Kevin Walker your shot creator your uh, big time scorer we're definitely hoping that Kevin Walker can stay healthy because that was a big issue for him last year and it killed a lot of the momentum he had because I feel like a lot of people forget he was excellent in the first like two months of the season he was shooting like 10 threes a game and 40 percent closing out games for the Celtics team so hopefully we can see that Kemba Walker back and I think that's, that's one of the biggest deals for the uh, Boston Celtics is if Kemba Walker can stay healthy for them uh, this year but I think that's a really solid starting lineup and it's definitely going to win a lot of games in the Eastern Conference uh, for the bench I have Jeff T, Romeo Lankford, Aaron Nesmith, Grant Williams, Tristan Thompson and Robert Williams uh, you got two nice backup centers in Tristan Thompson and Robert Williams. I think Tristan Thompson could play some starting minutes as well, depending on injuries, depending on the matchup. Uh, he can be a really nice backup uh, as well. And then Robert Williams could come in, bring some energy, bring some uh, shot blocking, and bring some athleticism that those other two guys don't really have. Jeff Teague, though being a bit of a defensive nightmare, uh, can be solid on the offensive side of the ball, can be a good enough score, and then facilitate to your guys. I think Romeo Langford's in for a very solid season next year. Uh, he dealt with a ton of injuries in his rookie season. And it wasn't even like it was a big injury that's like super worrying. It was like it was like he had a sprained wrist. He like hurt his ankles a couple times. He was sent down to the G League, but he showed some intriguing skills when he did play for the Celtics. A guy who can uh, shoot the ball a little bit is a really good slasher to the basket, and was a very very impressive defender. I was uh, really blown away by his defense when he would have the chance. Uh, and he stepped up and played in some key moments in some regular season games. I remember a game against the Lakers. He played some very, very solid basketball. Uh, and I think he's going to be a very solid rotation piece for the Celtics next year. You got Aaron Nesbeth, who's going to come in. And his only job is to shoot the ball and play hard in the defensive on the defensive end. And I think he's going to do that very well. The Celtics have needed someone for a long, long time that can just come off the bench and really shoot the ball. So getting someone like him, I think is going to be great for this team. And I think he's going to play impactful minutes uh, as a rookie, even though this is a competitive team, especially with all the extra time that these rookies have had to prepare uh, and him not being like the youngest player. I think it makes a ton of sense for him to play some valuable minutes for the Celtics team, and I'm really excited to see him. Uh, I got Grant Williams playing some good minutes as well. He showed some really nice things for the Celtics last year. He's definitely a good locker room guy. That's something he's always going to be. Uh, he's a really good defender as well. He's just super smart on that side of the ball, and he's really strong as well, so he uses his body good. Uh, sets very good screens. Uh, passes at the right time it's just a really high IQ guy as a whole uh, his only question is the shot which the shot was definitely improving towards the end of the season he was playing some valuable minutes in playoff series for the Boston Celtics and that shot was really coming around uh, he missed like 27 threes in a row to begin the season I think he had like the most threes in a row missed in the whole NBA uh, but he really started to heat up, and it's not like he's going to be a great shooter, but as long as he can be a threat from out there and then still play the good defense that he does, maybe play some small ball five at times, I think he's going to be a super impactful player for the Celtics next year. Uh, my team MVP for them is Jason Tatum. I think he's truly going to ascend into being a superstar level player next year. We saw so many great things from him last year, both in the regular season and the playoffs. I feel like his playoff run honestly went a little bit underrated just because the Celtics didn't go super deep. Uh, but he averaged about 26, 10, and 5 uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals. He was playing some truly elite defense, and I expect him to be a guy who averages like 25, 8, 
maybe four and a half, a steal and a half, a block on some really good efficiency. He's going to be hitting those really tough sidestep threes. He's going to be getting to the basket and finishing well. Uh, and he's just going to be doing kind of everything out there for the Celtics. I'm excited to see that playmaking hopefully take another step because that's uh, basically was the only weakness of his game last year is that he really wasn't a good playmaker. But in the playoffs, he showed that he can be a playmaker. So if he could be more of a facilitator, I think that uh, is going to really help him into truly being one of the top 10 players in the entire league. I'm super high on Jason Tatum going into this next season. I don't even think he's going to be just the team MVP. I think he could be legitimately in MVP conversations, not like top three, but he can be a top five MVP guy. I think Jason Tatum's in for an excellent season next year. My team defensive player of the year is Marcus Smart. He's going to be uh, that guy who's just playing super gritty is going to be willing to do anything for this Boston Celtics team uh, and is one of the best guard defenders in the entire league, and it's not even an argument. I think the only guard de- defender who's definitively better than him uh, is Ben Simmons, but him and, and like Drew Holiday are very well in that conversation for being the second best guard defender in the entire league. Uh, he's And he's going to be so nice for the Celtics team this year. Hopefully his three-point shot can continue to get better as it has every year. Uh, He's super inconsistent. It feels like he's either the best shooter one night or the worst shooter the next. Uh, So hopefully he can just be consistently solid. But he did shoot a pretty good percentage last year. He's going to be a guy who's a playmaker as well. But obviously his most value is on the defense side of the ball. And the hustle, the effort, the leadership that he brings to this team is uh, so, so valuable. Something that really doesn't show up on the stat sheet. And honestly, as a player that for me, for the Celtics, I would say is untouchable. I love Marcus Smart, and I love what he brings to this team. Next, my team most improved player is Grant Williams. Uh, Like I said, I'm really high on him going into this next season. I think he's going to continue to bring uh, the valuable things I did last year, being a locker room guy, being uh, really smart on the defensive side of the ball and using his body super well. Uh, And I think that three-point shot in his offense as a whole is going to come along a ton. Uh, I also was definitely thinking about putting Romeo Langford here uh, just because he didn't really get much opportunity, and he definitely could be another guy. I think both of those rookies are in for pretty good seasons next year and are going to have to play some valuable minutes because the Celtics are a team that has dealt with injuries at times, and Kemba Walker's probably going to get rested. They're going to manage his minutes with that knee, so we're probably going to see some lineups where it's Mark Smart at the 1, Romeo Linkford at the 2, Jalen Brown at the 3, uh, Tate about the 4, and then whatever center you want to run out. Uh, so definitely those guys are going to have to step up and play valuable minutes for this team. Uh, the depth is looking a lot better, and I think those guys are a big part of it. My biggest storylines around the season are, is Jason is Jason Tatum ready to be a true number one on a championship team yet? Which I think he is, but it's definitely a question is if he can be a superstar level player yet. If he can go from being a uh, very, very high upper echelon all-star to ascending into true superstardom. If he can continue to hit those sidesteps, step back threes. If he can continue to be more of a playmaker. Uh, continue to play the excellent defense that he does. Be a rebounder. Just do honestly everything out there. Maybe even improve his handle a little bit. Uh, he can be a number one on a championship team. But I just don't know if he's ready for that right now. I could definitely see it coming. But that's definitely a big storyline around the season. And then Ken having it. Uh, cannot having an elite big men work in a league that is slowly the bigs are coming back they're not the main guys in the league and at the end of the day this is a, a wing dominated league but guys like bam out anthony davis nicole Jokic, joel Embiid are some of the better players in the entire league and the celtics especially in their conference are going to have to go against a team like a miami heat like a philadelphia 76ers so can having just some solid bigs who are all undersized like i don't think a single one of the bigs that the Celtics uh, have that are going to be playing uh, big rotation minutes are over 6'10". I'm pretty sure Daniel Tice and Tristan Thompson are both 6'9". I think Robert Williams might be 6'9", too. So can these undersized, just solid but not great big men work? And we saw that be exposed last year. Bam Adebayo had a ridiculous series against the Boston Celtics, and that's definitely an interesting storyline. I think it can, uh, but you're going to have to play some really good team basketball. You're going to have to be Uh, coached very well brad stevens is going to have to drop some uh very impressive defensive schemes especially against a guy like bam and by who's so versatile like obviously 
obviously Joel Embiid is great, uh, but his best ability is in the post. And when you have good defenders like a Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum, you can double at times and hide those defenders and force turnovers. But uh, against a guy like Bam Adebayo, who is an improved shooter, who is killing the Celtics in the mid-range, out of the pick and roll, and is so fast, can handle the ball the way he does, it's definitely going to be an interesting thing to see if uh, not having uh, an elite big can work. My expectations for the Boston Celtics is for them to be a top two to four seed in the Eastern Conference. I probably have a sh- have them finishing third behind the Miami Heat. I think they'll be a super solid regular season team. Uh, could definitely see them finishing second as well. Uh, uh, but yeah, they're just going to be a really nice regular season team. And I expect them to be a second round or conference finals exit. Uh, I think they can compete with any team uh, in the Eastern Conference for sure, but I'm just not super confident in, in them beating a team like the Miami Heat or the Milwaukee Bucks with their improved roster. It's definitely going to be an interesting season for the Celtics. I'm super excited to see what they do with that trade exception. I think that could make a big impact on this. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to see my Boston Celtics back out there.